Hey guys, welcome back to Modern Life for the 70s Mind and now Bob's Cabinet of Curiosities. If you follow my channel at all, you'll know that I like going over some old things that maybe some of you aren't familiar with. And that's what this channel is all about. So if you're new to this channel, please hit the subscribe button below and also click the notification icon. That way you'll be notified whenever I put out some new content. Today I'm going to be going over bootleg records. Uh, those are kind of fun. In case you're not familiar with where the term bootlegging came from, it actually started like in during Prohibition, during that time period, where people would actually hide uh, items in their legs of their boots. So it was called bootlegging. In the 70s, uh, when the recording of music became a lot easier and maybe even a little smaller, um, people would take these recorders and take them to concerts. As a result, they would record the concert and then have their concert recording put on vinyl. And those were the bootleg records. Most of them, like I said, were made by fans who went to these concerts. And some got pretty fancy. They would tap into the uh, the, the sound system and would actually somehow get around that and get better recordings. Some just had uh, portable recording devices that they used and the recordings obviously uh, weren't as good. But they did give us some very unique live concert albums that otherwise we never would have gotten. But like I said on the negative side the re recordings quality was never <laughs> all that great. Technology uh, did improve over time, and the recordings did get better. Um, I first got my bootleg records, uh, I'm from the Chicago area, and I believe it was in an area of Chicago called Piper's Alley, and then there was one or two record stores there that you would go into, and they'd have these bins of bootleg records. Um, there were concerts from everybody you can imagine at the time on vinyl. And they weren't available anywhere else. So you ask yourself, how was that legal? <laughs> I don't think it was. So how they got away with that at, at the time is unknown to me. But it was the 70s. And I don't think they were as tight on uh, copyright laws. Now, I know in 1976, the uh, Copyright Act extended uh, protection uh, for recordings like these. At first, they weren't covered under the Copyright Act, but then they were. So maybe that's uh, when they started coming down on them and eventually um, stores like that went away. I know in the 90s when the whole digital file sharing fad uh, started, that really took away from the need to put music like this on vinyl because people would just share it uh, digitally. So, all right. So I wanted to show you a couple of the uh, bootleg albums I got. They were all kind of the same appearance it was a uh, album and then they had a like a 12 by 12 or 11 by 11 piece of paper that would fit in the front so this is a neil young and crazy horse um it's funny the name of the so-called record company is phonograph <laughs> i guess i see the the humor in that so this had um 10 songs it's just like a regular album and I'll show you the album all the albums were very generic even this cover really didn't have a front or a back and the the vinyl themselves were just very basic it didn't say anything like this says phonograph side one and then phonograph side two so there was nothing special about the artwork on these things but it was so nice to be able to come up with a recording that you had never heard of before. So you got to hear some of these concert settings that, that were so unique. And I also have another one. This is the Beatles live in any town. <laughs> I'm assuming they just didn't know where the recording was. And it is interesting to know because there's rarely anything on these. This does say here, uh, there are rumors that part of this album was recorded at that very famous Smithville concert. But we asked both blah, 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 and blah, blah, blah. And they said, definitely not so perhaps a couple of tracks may be from the horse horse's neck and if that is the case he wouldn't he said that wouldn't be very kosher so i'm not sure why but um 
anyway so this is the beatles and it's got all their early stuff twist and shout uh day tripper she loves you roll over beethoven can't buy me love yesterday nowhere man so there's i mean really quality uh re top hit songs on these things this one was even more generic it was basically stamped side one <laughs> i don't know if you can see that right there it says side one and you want to guess what this side says side two so again uh really didn't go into any detail where they were were recorded or where these came from uh there's no information like that other than like generic names so that was um bootleg records what a at the time what a great thing to find and i really enjoyed listening to a bunch of these i had a bunch more I don't know where they went. I'm 95% convinced my mom sold them at a garage sale. And uh, these are the ones that I have remaining. I must have had them somewhere else where she didn't get her hands on them. Half of my life got sold in garage sales without me knowing about it. Oh, well. Um, anyway, so that's it. I just wanted to pass those by you, let you know that um, I have those. And if you're not familiar with them, now you are. All right, guys. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, please click the like button below. And if you would subscribe to my channel, that'd be even better. All right, guys. Thank you. Peace out. I'll catch you next time. Bye-bye.